Here we go. Let's see if this old Porsche still has some life in her. Now that is the way you fix an old Mercedes-Benz with a fuel distributor. It's a 1946 Willys. Speed control. Look at the cruise control on this Rolls. This is how you turn on the cruise control. I don't know about you guys, but I mean, I live for this kind of stuff. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Legit Streetcars. My name is Alex and boy, oh boy, do I have a fantastic video for all of you guys out there. Today, I am in what looks to be an old abandoned warehouse with about 30 forgotten classic cars. We're talking old G-Wagons, old Porsches. We have a Willys Jeep Broncos. We have an original Supra right here that runs and drives, I'm gonna show you in a minute, but most of these cars have not started or been driven in decades, and they're all owned by the same collector. He's been buying them throughout the years, and he's given me permission and the keys to each one of these. So in this video, we're gonna be using pretty basic tools here, starting fluid, uh, some good lighting, I brought some fuel, and of course, a couple of jump packs, and we're gonna see what happens. We're gonna see what we can get started, maybe take one of these out for a ride. I have no idea what's gonna happen, but, First, I gotta show you guys one of the coolest tools that I've seen in a very long time. This is something that's gonna apply to every one of you. And that would be this, the Carly Connected Diagnostic Tool. Guys, you've been asking me, Alex, how can we code cool features and unlock cool features on our car without needing to go to the dealer and spending hundreds of dollars? How can we get Euro spec options on a US-based vehicle? Well, I'm gonna show you this little guy right here. It's less than 70 bucks. There'll be coupon codes and links and everything in the description box, of course. This will do it for you, and it's an amazing OBD2 diagnostic tool as well. I helped my friend Sam Crack fix his free twin turbo BMW using this and just our cell phone. So let me show you exactly how this works. It's gonna blow your mind. All right, guys, so I'm working on a 2015 BMW 6 Series. This is actually an Alpina car, very rare, very expensive. Uh, but Carly works on a many different makes and models, and what's cool is you go to their website and you can actually see what kind of features you can unlock before you buy it so we'll get to the health scan in a minute it says very bad this is really cool it'll check to see if your odometer has been messed with and you can diagnose your vehicle but I got to show you customization you just hit check coding possibilities all right so these are all the modules that we can play around with coding guys this is amazing you can get rid of seatbelt chimes uh, you can turn on euro spec lighting options you can change the chime inside of your vehicle so for example you can make it go from the BMW chime like this and switch it up to the Rolls Royce chime like this. Also, I went into iDrive. So in iDrive, you have the option to change the logo on the center screen. So being an Alpina, that has been checked. Uh, but if this was a regular BMW, that's what it would say. You can change it to M Performance. You can even change it to BMW Christmas, whatever that is, Rolls Royce. A lot of cool different options. So it looked like this originally. And then I changed the coding to M Performance and now it starts up like this. And these options seriously never end, guys. You can turn on all sorts of things and turn off uh, many different options as well. So you can play around with this for literally ever. So I already changed the headlights uh, to the Angel Eyes European spec. Uh, so this had the US spec Angel Eyes, of course. Uh, very, very cool options. It's less than 70 bucks, but when you go to the site uh, to unlock some features, it's a subscription based, but it's still way, way cheaper than going to the dealer. Something else I really like uh, is you can check for issues. So this is gonna scan the entire car. So when you go check out a used car, this is just gonna look at it all and spell everything out to you in layman's terms. So even if you don't know how to work on cars, you're gonna understand if there's a major issue or not. Okay, so health status says very bad. You can definitely use this as a negotiating tool when you're checking out a car. Uh, but we know a lot of these have to do with telematics. Uh, that could have been a low voltage situation. But you can go down uh, to engine. It says acceptable, but we're gonna look more into the codes. We have Vanos, camshaft codes. This could be a total lifesaver if you're going to look at a used car. So this, of course, is gonna scan all of your trouble codes. And one of my favorite things is the used car check. So you can actually see if the mileage corresponds in between the different control units on the car. Because there are so many control modules that save the mileage as well, 
Carly can check those modules to read out what they read and that way you can compare them. So this one is coming up uh, as good. It's saying 115,000 kilometers, which it really has like 71,000 miles or something like that. Uh, and then you can see span from lowest to highest and it's basically the same. Uh, no higher mileage than dashboard indicated. So this car has not had the mileage played with at all. Uh, but trust me guys, there are cars out there. I've seen them myself that they've rolled back the digital cluster uh, and most people would never have any idea. And now with this, you will know. It also does a bunch of different live data parameters and you can select what those are. So you can actually do uh, kind of a little bit of live data logging. You can let your imagination run wild engine temperature, transmission temperature, adaptation values of the transmission. This is seriously a powerful tool and I absolutely love it. All right, so obviously I'm loving my Carly Connected car tool. It's not very often that I get so excited about a tool in this price point, but this is exactly what you guys have been asking me for, a tool that allows you to code your vehicle at home with excellent diagnostic capabilities and data logging. This has it all, it's so affordable. There'll be a link down below with a coupon code as well and I can't wait to hear from you guys what cool features you've unlocked on your cars. Uh, so with that being said, let's go take a look at some old cars that don't even have an OBD2 port. All right, so 1978 Porsche 928. I got my gloves on, you never know what lives on the surface of an old dusty car. They left me the keys right here in the door. It should be unlocked, yeah. All right, so let's take a look at this interior. It does have an automatic transmission, uh, 70,000 miles, uh, if that is correct. All right, there we go. Do we have shocks? No, we don't have shocks, but we do have a battery. The first thing that we want to look at before trying to start any of these cars uh, is the oil level. We want to check over some important fluids. And here's the engine. So this is an eight-cylinder engine. I honestly don't know the displacement, but... Uh, it looks like everything is there. We have our distributor cap with some tape on it, so someone had done something at some point to this. Um, and let's take a look. Looks like we have all of the belts are still there. Oh, look at this, I think I found the dipstick, so we'll check that out. But yeah, we wanna look over, make sure everything's intact, nothing's taken apart. Uh, we basically don't know the history on any of these cars. We got the jumper, this is so exciting. Putting power to a car that hasn't had power in years I don't know about you guys, but I mean, I live for this kind of stuff. This is so cool. As a kid, I used to go to junkyards all the time, and I just absolutely love thinking of the story behind an old car, especially one that hasn't been restored, that seemingly looks worthless to the general public. But uh, let's see here. We're going to hook up black to black, guys. Black to black. Going live. 13 volts there to the battery. All right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> We have power, this is awesome. Oh, you know what, this is totally a Euro spec car. Look at this. The climate control is not in English. This said something, I have no idea what it said. Uh, hang on, we're in neutral, so that would be okay, but let's just make sure we're in park. Foot on the brake. <laughs> Here we go, let's see if this old Porsche still has some life in her. Dude, it cranks. Maybe we gotta prime it. Come on, baby. It's showing a half tank of fuel. We are gonna kill jumper packs today, that's for sure. Come on, baby. Oh, man. I think I hear the fuel pump back there. Oh, uh, all right, it's starter fluid time. All right, so I'm just gonna go right for the air box here, we'll take this apart. All right. And I wonder what they charge at the Porsche dealer doing air filter on one of these. <laughs> Not too bad. All right, so there we have it. We have our throttle blade right there. Okay, so I have my assistant, Ethan, in the Porsche. He is going to turn the key right when I spray this. You ready, Ethan? Yeah. Go ahead. We'll do a quick spark test. I mean, it doesn't even sound like it wants to fire at all. All right, I said I wasn't gonna diagnose any of these cars, but I gotta know if this thing has any spark. Let's see if the coil will arc. Go ahead, uh, Ethan. Nothing, 
All right. Yeah. It normally would jump a little bit, especially when you start to go closer uh, to the connector. And we are not getting any spark at all. So unfortunately, I think we're dead in the water here. We just don't have time to diagnose and fix all of these old classic cars. Uh, so let's move on to another one. So we have this guy here. Who knows when the last time this was started and check out this totally rad interior. Oh, and it's a stick. It's a stick. Nice. This is awesome. Look at this interior though. This has to be the original interior on the car. Look at these back seats, guys. This is so, so cool. Actually, why does it look like this has a bigger back seat than the other one? Hang on a second. Oh. Hey, look at this. I actually sort of fit back here. Eh, not really. I'm 5'9". Okay, there we go. It's locked into place, so I'd be sitting like this. This is how you hang out in the back of an old Porsche 928. If you had a really short driver, this wouldn't be that bad of a place to be. All right, so let's pop the hood on this guy. Let's see what we got. All right, so this has to be roughly around the same year. Uh, it looks to be basically the same engine, same distributor cap over here. This has working hood shocks, which is a plus. With all the, look at all the material from, look at this. It's just turning to dust. All right, so we can't get the back hatch open, um, but since we're now Porsche experts, we know exactly where the battery is. We're gonna go in through this way, but look at this. They actually give you a spare tire. It's a donut, but a lot of big sedans, AMGs and whatnot, don't come with anything anymore. A couple extra spark plugs uh, from Germany, cool. Readjust V-belts after 800 miles. That's when you have to adjust these new V-belts. That's awesome. Yeah, there we go, that's neutral, okay. All right, we got power. This is a US spec, everything is in English. Ah, uh, no. This ignition seems really, really loose. Uh, that's not gonna do it. Wow, we are striking out here, people. All right, guys, third time's a charm. I got the keys to this guy. Let's see if we can open this. Nice. It's a good first step. Wow, this one looks really nice. Wow, it stays up. I don't even need this. All right, check this out. This is definitely different than the earlier ones uh, where we had the distributor right here. 32 valve. I'm gonna assume this one's much faster. Porsche guys, let me know. We're missing the air box. Not a good sign. Uh, but let me check the fluids. And we should be good to go. I'm holding this. Ah! With my head. <laughs> yeah, let's just do one of these. Good oil. Let's do this. 80,000 miles or something? Yeah. Jesus. This is not cool. Got no luck, guys. I mean, I don't know if it's locked. It sort of sounds locked. Ugh. All right, guys, don't buy an old Porsche. They will never, ever start if you let them sit for God knows how long. But yeah, this, this thing, it kind of seems like it's locked up. All right, we're moving on. There is a G-Wagon over here. You guys know I love my Mercedes. I was a Mercedes tech for a long time. Although this is a 1980 G-Wagon. I've never touched one this old. Uh, so let's go try and get that one started and hopefully we'll have better luck than all these old Porsches. It's a 1980 G-Wagon and it hasn't been inspected since 2007, so 13 years, very good possibility. Uh, it hasn't ran in 13 years. Let's take a look at what we got here. Now the G-Wagons I'm used to have the, you know, started off with the M113 engine back in like 02 uh, when they became kind of mainstream. And this is different. This is a straight engine, a dual overhead cam straight engine, and we got Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. It's a six cylinder straight six. I thought maybe it was a five, but this is a pretty massive uh, six cylinder. This is the fuel distributor. So these older uh, Mercedes had mechanical fuel injection. So that's what this is, super old. Not many people know how to work on that, including myself, um, but everything basically looks to be in order. Let's take a look here. Nothing really on the ground, nothing pouring out. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna go for it. The keys in the ignition. I'm gonna hook up the jumper pack and take a look at this interior. This is really cool. Uh, I have no idea if this is original. I'm gonna say no, but let me know in the comment section. Uh, it has Recaro seats. It's got a bunch of seat adjustment buttons, I think. Uh, of course, this is a manual. We have some extra wheels and tires in the back. This is so, so cool. Actually, 
Take a look at these seats in here. This is probably what they looked like originally, uh, and that would match a 1980s vehicle for sure. Uh, so this is really cool. We have the key waiting for us in the ignition. Let's see if we'll need any starting fluid or anything. Oh, we have power. Let's do this. Come on, baby. It's, it's cranking nice. All right. All right, hang on, let's do some starting fluid. All right, I got Ethan spraying the starting fluid. When I start cranking it, go ahead and start spraying, okay? All right, All right here we go. Nothing. Uh. Oh, this is not good. Can't get anything started. Oh my gosh. Why won't you start G-Wagon? I think there is fuel in here. That gauge just might be off. Probably really old, but yeah, with that starting fluid, it should have at least fired a little. All right, so only when I crank uh, spray that stuff, okay? All right, here we go with some fuel in the tank. Okay, that's enough on the fluid. No more fluid. Nope, not happening. G-Wagon is dead too. But this is the reality of trying to start barn fine type of vehicles. The integral and one of the most complicated and expensive parts of these Mercedes is the ones to fix. Mm -hmm. Whoever owned this car before it completely eliminated it for a way older technology that's supposed to be inferior, but in reality, work just works. <laughs> you know? Nice. So it's like, you kind of have the right idea. So I'm feeling a little bit defeated. I know there's probably some carbureted American cars over there that we can get fired up, which we will definitely try. But I want to get one old Euro car started, and this is so par for the course that none of these will run. But check this out. This is very unique. It's another old G-Wagon, and they ripped out that central fuel distributor thing, whatever they call that, and it has a carburetor. They just slapped a carburetor on this thing. So it's totally dead. Again, no idea when the last time was uh, that this thing ran. It's quite dusty as well, but it's got a pretty cool retro looking interior, probably all original. It's an automatic though. Anyway, we're gonna put the jumper pack on this. I already checked, it's got oil, all that good stuff. Well, let's just see if it'll fire up. We have power. Nope. Nothing. We're in park, let's try neutral. Oh, in neutral it works. Wow. Come on, baby. All right, starting fluid time. Let's do this, Ethan. Ready, Ethan? Yes! Something starts! <laughs> we got it to go. Oh, it died. Hang on. Hold on, you might have to do that again. Ready? Sounds pretty good, pretty low on fuel, but that's good enough. The only Euro car that starts so far, they just slapped a carburetor on. So let me see if, oh, I don't know if it'll idle on its own. Oh yeah. She runs. Come on, baby, idle, idle, idle. Ah. <laughs> All right, it runs. This thing runs. A G-Wagon with a carburetor. Now guys, now that is the way you fix an old Mercedes-Benz with a fuel distributor. So check it out. They used to have the injectors, the mechanical injectors. Oh, this thing's going crazy. Ah, okay, well it died. <laughs> they used to have the mechanical injectors, but they've been capped off. Uh, all six of them have been capped off, and now we just have a carburetor uh, on the original intake manifold, which is interesting if you think about it, because this intake manifold was never designed to have fuel going through it. It was only designed for an injected engine that would just have air going through it. So I would uh, venture to say this isn't the most efficient design because the engineers were not thinking a carburetor would be slapped on that intake, but I could be totally wrong. Maybe this is an intake that was meant for a carburetor on the older G-Wagons. I have no idea. All I care about is that we got this abandoned looking G-Wagon that's been sitting here forgotten for a very long time started and it runs. Uh, so we're moving on. I'm kind of confident now. Let's go over to 
There's a bunch of old Range Rovers. Let's see if we can fire any of those up. So we are gonna try and start this guy right here. We found the keys to it. It's all dusty and nasty inside. Uh, who knows when the last time it ran was, but look at this. This is pretty interesting, something we're not used to here in the United States with the steering wheel on the wrong side. Look at this. Very, very cool to see one of these over here. So I wish we had the keys to fire this up. I think, I don't know, this is a mid nineties uh, Land Rover. But so is this one, a 93, 95, something like that. Let's see, it looks like we have an eight cylinder engine, naturally, and a really, really old battery. Quality right there, and that's what these cars are known for, lasting forever and never having any real problems. <laughs> We're idling at 2200 RPM, not too bad, but it sounds great, it sounds awesome. Let me show you the interior on this one. So this is, uh, I don't know, you guys tell me, a 95, something like that? Looks, uh, look at how massive the back seat is. This is crazy, this is crazy big. Um, but yeah, man, at some point, this was the SUV to have. This was really, really expensive and technologically advanced. And it has 200,000 miles on it now, too. And so we all know that someone dumped a ton of money into uh, getting this going. But these are in demand. A lot of these Land Rovers and Range Rovers, people really want these things. Even from the 90s, they'll pay big money for this. If we can get the idle down a little bit. Although it doesn't really sound like it's idling that high. Weird. Uh, but yeah, here we go. This thing runs. We got two down. I'm really hoping this one will fire up. This is so freaking cool. It's a 1946 Willys in green, of course. Uh, and take a look at this engine. It's got a little, little baby four cylinder. And it looks like it has a newer battery. And like this thing has actually been put away nicely. Let's see. This is so cool. It has a little jump seat in the back. Uh, of course, it is a manual. Let's hop in here. Uh, it's funny, like the key is just so tiny. <laughs> All right, now let's double, let's double check we have this in neutral. Oh my God, this is so weird. Okay, so the clutch. Oh my God. I think that's neutral, guys. I'm not really sure what's going on. Yeah, I'm gonna say so. Let's just give it a, I mean, I got the clutch in, it shouldn't move anyway, but let's see. Oh, that's what the battery, we just, now we gotta hook up the jumper. This might start. Whoa, all right, let's do this. Come on, Willie. Whoa. Sounds weird. It sounds like the starter maybe isn't disengaging. Ethan, <laughs> we're gonna need some starting fluid. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I should probably tell you, don't put your face too close to that if it blows up. Okay. <laughs> Serious. Look at this little baby carburetor. It's so small. It's so cute. All right, let's try this again. I think it might go. This will at least give it like a one to one old gas to new gas ratio. Ethan is gonna try and start this thing up. I'm gonna man the starting fluid. Go ahead, Ethan. You know what, give it, try and give it a little gas too, if you could, so you can let off the brake. Okay. All right, go ahead. Starting fluid. That's okay. Right, I'm gonna try stopping this. Oh, it's alive. No, 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 it's not alive. <laughs> it was straight up running on the starting fluid, but we got it going. It runs. Uh, I think it's safe to say we have a fuel delivery issue or just straight up bad fuel. So, anyway, 1946 Willys. She runs. Oh, and that's Ethan, by the way. <laughs> hey, everybody.
All right, so here's a really cool one that I didn't know existed. A lot of people don't know these exist. This is a Plymouth Trail Duster, and the owner of this whole collection, Frank, made it a point to tell me about this particular car. Uh, when you just walk by it, you, you don't think of it as being a Plymouth. I didn't even know Plymouth uh, made big SUV-type trucks like this back in the day. So not sure on the year, 70s, maybe early 80s, uh, but really, really rare um, and really, really cool. Look at the size look at the size this is so awesome imagine going on a road trip your whole family piled into this thing having a good old time this is so so cool and this thing looks to be in really really nice condition this is awesome uh, we already have the jumper hooked up to it it's carbureted we should definitely be able to get this thing started you know what we're not gonna let this thing stress out starting fluid we're running out there's enough for a couple more cars. Look at that. She's a beauty. Go ahead and start cranking away. Give it, give it some revs. Sweet. All right, keep it going. Nice, nice. This is so cool to breathe life back into these cars after just sitting, doing nothing for so long. I can't wait to see these things fully restored one day. Uh, the owner of all of these is going to get to them. He's working on three of them right now. And his plan is to restore all of these cars. There's a total of 30 of them. We're not looking at all of them in this video. Uh, but these will all be back on the road one day. I'll try to follow them uh, as much as I can for you guys. Wow, this runs really, really well. Look at the dash. This is so cool. I love this kind of stuff. Oh, <laughs> and it died. That's it. Let's see if it'll restart. Nope, that's good enough for today, though. <laughs> this is owned by one of the body techs uh, at Mancuso Collision Custom. And about 10 years ago, it was keyed, and he's basically just been storing it ever since. But this one definitely runs and drives. But this is an amazing car. This is an all original Super. It has a couple little bolt ons, wheels, and like an intake and whatever. But the rest of it is all original. It's got about 80,000 miles on it. And unfortunately, someone keyed this car. So it's going to need a complete new paint job, uh, which is a shame because it was in really good condition before this. Uh, so they went pretty deep with the key marks. There's really nothing here uh, that can be fixed easily, as you can probably see in here. And they even did the roof as well. It is a shame that there are people out there that would destroy such a beautiful car, but this is a six-speed manual Supra. This is a 1994. This is the one that everybody wants. Fantastic, fantastic car, and they have completely skyrocketed in value uh, over the last few years, as I'm sure you guys know. And I've always loved these because they look kind of futuristic. I mean, this is a 94. Uh, they did a great job with the interior, with the seats. I just absolutely love these Supras. I wanted to try and fire up this old Rolls Royce, but I found out that it's not actually part of the collection. This is a customer's car here at Mancuso Collision Custom, so I can't really play around with it. Uh, but I can show you guys the car for a minute. This is really cool. Again, massive back seat. This is crazy. So you could be chauffeured around in this thing in luxury. I am not sure uh, what year it is. It's very old. Look at this. Look at this stuff. The original stereo is in this car. This is so cool. And look at all these massive metal knobs. This is nuts. So I don't even know what this stuff does. Pull for quantity, defrost, heat. So this is all your heater controls. Hazard warning, push button. All right. This is crazy. Look at this. They have the uh, dials for the uh, FM and AM radio down here. That is so bizarre. 
Um, what else? We got a uh, radio aerial. It's probably the antenna speed control. Look at the cruise control on this rolls. This is how you turn on the cruise control. On, engage, resume. How cool is that? All right, guys, so that'll do it for today's video. I hope you really enjoyed this one. If you did, hit the thumbs up button, share the video, subscribe if you're new. Have an awesome one. I'll catch all of you in the next video.